this video is about the impact driver attachment for the Ryobi and Rigid Job Plus Job Max uh, series tools. The Rigid models I don't own, but you can see them at Home Depot. They have a 12 volt cordless model, a plug in the wall model, and now a air tool, air tool version. Uh, what's common in the in them is this attachment system. It's it's a little bit tricky and complex, but basically the motor is reversible. Uh, you you've got a shaft drive with that little uh, hex uh, shaft drive. Uh, you can also place these on at different angles, uh, depending on the shape of the tool and the shape of the job you're trying to work with. You can put these on at different angles. The factory default head that you'll get with either tool is going to be one of these that holds the little oscillating tools and they tend to give you the little flat uh, cutter the the little sanding head and the uh, the semicircular uh, cutter uh, very high quality blades they're not cheap the uh, the rigid models are priced accordingly to what the what they give you it, it's not like you save money by buying a Ryobi version the main issue with the Ryobi version is that it will use their OnePlus battery system. That makes it a little bit more bulky than the rigid uh, model which, which has the, uh, the smaller base. In this one, what I, what I wanted to do was expand my uh, personal usage of this little tool system. I use these tools almost daily, as you can see from the wear and tear on them. So a couple days ago I went and I got the impact driver head because I use this tool a lot. You can see how it's a little beat up. It's, uh, it's a Ryobi impact driver. It has a speed control that's based on a trigger. Okay, so I can, I can control the speed based on that trigger. In theory, these have speed control on the trigger too, but what I'm finding is it's, it's not as sensitive. It's, it's not, it's not what you get out of this. Okay. Now, as far as the impacting mechanism inside of these things, I would say they're maybe equal, or this one's a little bit more powerful in that it takes the turning force from the, uh, from the tool head and the reversing mechanism is on the tool. It's not on this thing. So it takes that turning force and it takes a lot of revolutions on this to get that to move but you can see it moving a little bit as I as I get it with my finger and it's uh, but yeah a lot of revolutions you can see how if I turn this with my finger just a little bit it makes this thing spin like crazy right the thing is with all the weight on this um, and you can snap it onto the tool head sideways front ways however you want to do it to reach your job and and it becomes of course your your angle impact tool now angle impact tools are not real common and a lot of the, your impact wrench uh, impact tools are going to be like this which puts your hand and your ability to put force on it really close to the center of gravity so what you're going to get with something like this is being able to force that in and and have a good center of uh, you know good center of gravity for that be able to choke up on a grip uh, and with this thing you get to be able to reach in some odd places but I want you to see the next little video snippet where I'm I'm trying to use one of these on screws I was using this little screwdriver head I buggered up screwdriver heads and stuff like that so we're going to clip over to that snippet and then I'm going to get back to the discussion Okay, so to illustrate what I run into with this Job Max impact head on the uh, the, the Ryobi uh, the the P240, this one's a 246, it's the same basic thing. Um, on this tool is I don't seem to have the same level of speed control on this that I would like to have, and because a lot of the weight is distributed in a linear manner on this tool. Um, you know, I, I can use this thing as like an impact wrench, but when I try to use it as an impact driver, let's say I'm getting these screws in on this wire run, what happens when I go to press up on here is I don't have enough leverage to keep that thing, well, now it's doing it. But on some of the others, what it was doing is it was just hopping back and stripping them out. So there's not enough weight and the leverage isn't quite right to get that thing pressed in. So it's definitely one of the limitations on this, which means 
you really you can't eliminate having a a true impact driver if you have one of these in your in your tool belt setup. Um, but there are times with especially with a short screwdriver head or a short wrench head that you know you can use it to reach into some places where the regular gun shape just isn't going to go. And so yeah, you know is it a good tool? Yeah, but it's starting to get into some specialized stuff and and like I say, the rigid heads are compatible with the Ryobi body assembly on this. Um, this one's called the R8223401. And, you know, it says use only with the base model and it shows these others. You know, as if you couldn't use this with a Ryobi base. Well, you know what, they're made to go together. The other thing I'm, I mean, I'll talk about in the other video segment, but this whole rubber head comes off, which means that you'll probably end up you know losing it or tossing it at some point but I guess it's good if you want to protect stuff um, I, I'm not sure if I like that or dislike that we'll talk about that uh, some more in the next segment okay, so you you saw where the issue is with these things now if I'm trying to reach in between some some beams or rafters or, or wall pieces to get let's say a hole for some electrical conduit this is where I have an advantage like from this the the mounting point for the bit up to here and these all use a, a relatively standard quarter inch hex mounting bit system with it, the little dimple works with the locking mechanism in there so with this I with this one that I'm going to use a lot I I have to have you know this much room to be able to get it and get it into a place and if studs have been placed really close together, let's say a window or something like that, I have a lot of limitations on where I can use this tool if I'm really trying to reach into stuff to work on stuff. With this one, I can reach into tighter places, but I'm never going to be able to put the force on that screw fastener or drill bit that I can do with this. So it becomes a little bit of a limited use tool when we do that. And... I would say 99% of the fasteners I'm going to use with one of these things with an impact driver is going to be wood screws. And wood screws are one of the things you're going to have a real problem with on this on this attachment. So, you know, yeah, you keep it for stuff that's a turning tool that, that uses this type of attachment system. But you're probably not going to be able to do a hell of a lot with wood screws with this thing. I mean, yeah, it can impact them in. But it's, it's really not that great for that. And so I, I usually give glowing reviews on all of these tools. On this one, I think you need to be really uh, aware of the fact that it's a limited use tool. It's, it's something that you're going to break out not nearly as often. It is not a replacement for one of these. Uh, there are people who have said, hey, if you have one of these Job Plus Job Max systems, you, you don't need to have all of those other specialized tools. That these tool heads replace and what I'm finding is that's not the case they it will not replace the standalone tool it, it gives you another option as far as reaching into tight spaces doesn't replace the standalone tool uh, build quality it's decent you know and, uh, the other thing I notice on this is that rubber cover actually uh, comes right off so you know, if you, if you use this with just the, the metal, it's, you know, that's the way it works. And the rubber cover comes off on that. It's, it's not really permanently attached. But it allows you to use this tool in an environment where bumping on, let's say, valuable furniture or freshly finished furniture isn't, isn't going to be an issue because you've got the rubber bumper stuff on there. Whereas uh, once one of these things gets a little used and beat up, you can see there's no rubber shielding around it. Uh, I would have to be extremely careful with this tool around certain types of furniture. So that, that's one of the things you'll run into if you're reaching inside of cabinets or fine furniture. You, you've got to use for that. There's other attachment heads for these. Um, the circular saw, uh, or, I'm sorry, no circular saw yet. There's a jigsaw, and then there's a reciprocating saw, like a mini saw is all type of attachment for it. They're okay and in very specialized uh, uses where you, you need to be able to get in with that limited amount of space but they're they're probably not going to replace the standalone tools cost wise it, it's also not very cheap this tool head was 50 bucks at the local home depot 
the impact driver is you know, $59.95, $69.95, depending on which model you get or whether or not they're having a sale. It, it's not a huge difference in price. It's a little bit cheaper. It gets you into the specialized unit. When you're talking about the long angle drill, and they do have an angle drill attachment for this, I, I don't think there was any money savings at all. In fact, I think the tool head was more money than the angle drill is. So it, it's just a matter of maybe saving some weight and and on your uh, uh, loadout is as far as what tools you're going to take to let's say a, a, a small handyman job or something I'm, I'm doing a lot of wall mount television installation television installation type stuff these days so the uh, you know it comes in useful it, it means I'm not having to roll a great big toolbox into somebody's place to get the work done I just want to get in do the work get out it's okay for that but I, I don't consider it to be a solution to every problem. And if you do buy one of these, uh, you have to have one of these first. Don't, don't discard it because it's, it's kind of a specialized thing.